Hello, and thanks for joining the discussion about which of the top smartwatches on the market as of spring 2024 is the best overall. I tested three candidates for first place for about a month, and this video shares the highlights and my reflections of, number one, the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic 47mm in silver, number two, the OnePlus Watch 2 46mm in radiant steel, and number three, the Tick Watch Pro 5 in black. If you're like me and want to know which smartwatch is worthy of being your new companion and which one is worth that price, but are struggling to make a decision, then keep watching and see if we can't figure it out together. This is a lengthy, in-depth video where I try to cover all aspects of a smartwatch, which I believe are the key distinguishing features between the brands. Feel free to jump through the video to the discussion points you care most about and look for the highlight of the smartwatch spreadsheet toward the end of the video with the big reveal on which smartwatch I ended up choosing. Let's get started with the Galaxy Watch 6 Classic. Let's get to unboxing this bad boy. It's a silver one, not the black one. It comes in black or silver. This is the 47 millimeter Galaxy Watch 6 Classic. It's the largest one with the largest battery. Really nice smooth band, silicone. Mm -hmm. meter. Small band, it comes with the watch. This is the blue one. In the box comes the band, the actual watch itself, the instructions, of course, and the charger. So it's a magnetic charger, just kind of hooks on. You can also charge this watch on a Samsung phone or wireless charger, uh, and it works uh, the same with that. So let's turn it on. This watch does have the rotating bezel got two buttons on the side. It prompts you to go through a tour once you finish setting up and downloading the apps that are needed for it. And so let's see, it says swipe down from the top. Okay, swipe up to go back to the watch face. And it's kind of omnidirectional. You can go up, down, left, or right. Uh, finding your apps, that's me. And you can see all the apps, swipe down to go back. Yeah, so if you go up or down, you go back to where you were. Next, notifications, on the right. And on the left, you pull them to the right. Swipe right from the edge. Okay, we've got tips. And then we'll go to our other widgets, the tiles, by going to the right. Swiping left. Daily activity. Press the home key. This is the home and the home key. And this bottom one is the back key. This top one is also the power key to turn on or off. So that's it. Enjoy. These ones are pretty simple. Um, just push down the button and click it in. It should snap into place. Okay, so now we're attached. Ta it's very smooth. I like that it lays flat because with the Fitbit, my Fitbit doesn't lay all the way flat. And so it's always curled up. If I take it off, it is nice that it kind of props itself up and sits there. But I think it'll be better for charging it that it can lay flat. And when I turned it on, it prompted me to go through the setup process, which took several minutes, like at least 10 minutes to go through everything um, for it to download the app, a couple apps that it needed. But the there's a nice haptic feedback with the bezels, that is really satisfying. Uh, I've heard a lot of people say that, but it is actually very satisfying. Let's see if we can play around some of the features. Um, okay, we've got 10 steps. All right, we're on our way there. And I'm gonna test this for against the Fitbit, which I believe is very accurate from what I've experienced with it. I've had this one for about six years, and I am kind of moving on to, I want more features that it doesn't have. You can customize the watch face, you can pick by just holding down and you can like go through the ones that are preset but then you can also hit add a watch face so some that have like a lot of information on it and so each of the little like tiles that are on the watch faces you can customize so i was looking at this one and you can customize the background color of course and you can pick color as well so i think this dark blue is really easy to see and then i like the gold but there's all kinds of colors each of these little tiles information blocks so pick what you want them to display so if i don't want the weather but i want my alarm or stopwatch or clock so let's try stopwatch and then if we have that there can we just go and tap that and go straight towards our stopwatch so if that's something you use regularly or if you know hey today i'm going to be using this you don't have to set them and then never change them again they're pretty easy and pretty quick to change so if you're going to be in the kitchen a lot you might want to have a stopwatch for baking then that's something you can just go and change the widget to that for the day and and it'll be much easier to access than going to find the tile but another thing that's really cool about this watch is that you can do the assistant so you can say 
when setting up the assistant, you can use Bixby or the Google Assistant, and you can pick the voice. So if one annoys you, you can go with another Hi, one. My name is Bixby. Hi, my name is Bixby. So we're going to pick that one for now. And then these are kind of some of the things that you can ask Bixby to do. For example, you can ask Bixby to show me the weather, schedule an event, set a timer. So instead of having this timer on the main watch face, you can just ask Bixby to do it. So if you don't have any messages, you can go in and select a recipient from your contacts or type in a number and start a new message that way. There's a lot of apps in here. There's the phone and then there's the calculator, all kinds of files. We're about to start a workout, so let's see if we can get it to turn on with the voice. Hey Bixby, start a treadmill workout. For the first workout, I wanted to compare the Galaxy Watch to the Fitbit Versa in order to get a basis for accuracy and consistency with the other watches. At the end of the workout, the 35 minute workout that we did, we did get an opportunity to correct the workout distance, but not any other metrics that we could correct. Here's some of the metrics you can see on the screen once we ended the workout and kind of what that looks like. The Galaxy did give us 177 calories burned and the Fitbit Versa gave us 142 calories burned, but the, the heart rates are pretty consistent at about 108, 109. Later we went on a walk and the Galaxy Watch did start auto tracking. We've got 10,421, 10,068 steps. This one throughout the day, this is the Galaxy, it kind of fluctuated. They they flipped back and forth on which one had more steps and less steps. So they weren't consistent throughout the day, but by the end of the day, they're pretty close. All right, we've unboxed the Galaxy. Now it's time to unbox the OnePlus Watch 2. In the box comes the watch, the charger port, instructions, and the band already attached. Hello, I'm on new 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 watch. Let's start with swipes. My function is the same as the Galaxy Watch, so we'll just go through this. If I could just tap that, swipe up for notifications. You can view notifications from the watch face. Wow, we've got our settings, hooray. All right, swipe right to go back. But the thing with the Galaxy Watch when you go through is that you can't go to like your tiles on the far right side by swiping left. It doesn't go in like a loop. It just goes in one direction because it'll have like notifications over there. Okay, yes, thank you, I don't need you. All right, so this is the great thing about the OnePlus is that it has this like honeycomb view to the apps. Okay, thank you, yes, I think we're done. Um, tutorial complete. Oh, thank you for making a cute little noise. Um, awesome. So this, it looks like we can scroll through all of our tiles and see if we can get back to the beginning. Yeah, so either way. So if you have two that you really like, you could put one on either side instead of having, like, to go all the way through to, like, the third one that you want. All right, so I know we can customize these and add more. Set it up, it goes through the same process as the Galaxy Watch, only it was a little bit easier because the app came up on my phone and was like, hey, go ahead and download the OHealth app. Um, so I didn't have to think about it. And then all the instructions, like in the manual, it says like, you know, you have to go and look for your device and add it, but I found it automatically and even came up with a warning that said it couldn't connect and it was connected already. So I just canceled out of that and it was easy to get, get going. So let's see, for the watch faces that come with it, I want one with some information, some details. Um, see if we can even find the same face that we have on the Galaxy Watch. I wonder if they are compatible or if they have any overlapping ones. This one seems like it has some good information. Now to run, I'm gonna just go ahead and start. And this thing turns, but I guess it's just a fidget spinner. <laughs> it does, it is a button. Started. I like that this one comes already with Google. This watch band feels a little more quality. It's just smoother and nicer than the other one, but that's not saying that this is a bad watch band. And of course, once we unbox the Tick Watch Pro, we'll go through and see how we feel about that watch band too, but just taking them one at a time. So let's uh, go ahead and play with this. Similar to how we went through the Galaxy Watch and set it up, we're gonna go through the OnePlus here and set up the settings the way we like them. You can set them up any, you know, they're very similar to the Galaxy Watch. There's a lot of similar settings. There is on all of the tiles, of course, you can set your health settings and your goals and the workouts are pretty similar, but they have just some different options. We did a test to see if the heart rate would be the same on both of them. They're consistent, so that is something we really like to see. For the watch faces, they both have complications and you can set what you want those, those complications to link you to, just like we did with the Galaxy Watch. So they're very similar and you can set them up however you prefer and make sure it's gonna meet your needs. We've unboxed the Galaxy Watch 6 Pro, the OnePlus Watch 2, and now we have Tick Watch Pro 5. 
time to do the unboxing. It came in the rain in a box that was soaking wet, and it doesn't seem like the actual watch has been impacted at all because it is protected in the cellophane. That's good news. Surprise, surprise, for the Tick Watch Pro 5, we also have the watch, the band attached already, instructions, and the charger that comes in the box. that you can swipe left or right to see all the tiles in the carousel sort of mode. All right, let's undo the two pins. <laughs> Press the crown to go back to the watch face. Okay, press the crown for apps. All right, nice. And the side button, so there's two buttons. Press the crown and then there's a button. As you recently used apps. Uh, okay. Well, if you double tap the side button, <laughs> And then once you set up your pen, a pen to use it. Press which to your last app to order the crown. Oh. Power start menu, and then you can press this again. It tackles it already. So if we go in, some of them have little edit buttons underneath, and some of them do not. Does not, does not, does. Customization needs more. Like this yeah. one over here is just going to let us change what we want in the slot. In my face. Timer may be a good one. Active hours today might be a good one. Get some stacks in here. Steps walk today. Definitely want that. And then the heart rate, we can put our alarm there. We could have access to some other information that might be going oh, out. No, heart rate's fine. We can leave that there. Oh, but it's covered up. Since the, the time is 10.30, it's covering the steps <laughs> that are counted there. That's kind of silly. Um, okay, so let's change the steps to Something uh, less less useful for me. All right, so we've got quick timers, calendar. Needs to sync all of this stuff still. Can't download the weather app. Why not? Do I need to do some updates? I'm not sure if you can see. It's very clear. Screen in person. If we scroll through, we can see some more information. So let's try using it. Okay, so we're gonna do a yoga workout on all of the watches and watch see when you do your first workout. It goes through some health information asking you your your age and your birth and height. One of the reasons that I really wanted to love the Galaxy Watch is that the Plus and the Tick Watch, you weren't able to control your camera from your phone. It's a thing that I know Apple Watches do, and I wanted to be able to do. And so I knew that the Galaxy Watch, you can control your camera from your phone, take a picture, and you can kind of see what, what is on the screen. And you couldn't do that with these other two. There's an app called Camera One that allows you to control your screen with your watch, or at least you can get a premium paid version or a free version. This is a free version. Allows you allows you to pause the video, allows you to stop the video. And so I can move my camera around and see it from the watch. I think the premium version allows you to do a little bit more uh, and it shows you in the app. So you just have to download it and it seems to work on the OnePlus. Let's see if it works on the Tick Watch. And so it seems to work also on the Tick Watch. Allows me, I just went into camera one and it looks exactly the same. So I can, can move the phone around, adjust it. And I'll be able to see on my watch where I am and be able to record and take a picture. And then hit play. We are getting directions to Target and we're going to select walking directions. And it vibrates when we need to do a turn. The sound on, it will also bloop at you. Slide right. And we just got back from the walk and we are going to turn off, and they're all very mad, and we're going to turn off the workout. So start with this one first, stop, and exercise. So take watch, did three miles, and it vibrates when you hit each mile. We call them laps. And have all of our stats here. Recommends 14 hours of recovery time for a walk. Uh, don't know if we're gonna get that. So 56, 86 steps. All right, so we have all of that. Good, a good bit of information. It's really nice. So if we go back, let's see, we're at 31% battery. Okay, so let's check out the Galaxy Watch. Finish our workout. Um, we've got 63, 20 steps. That's quite a bit more than the uh, Tick Watch said. It's about the same amount of miles. 
And for these two, we were able to test the media control, but because I think, I think this is because there's three watches connected to my phone, that I wasn't able to do the media control on this one. Um, so I was able to change the song I was listening to on my phone through my Bluetooth headphones um, via changing it on the watch. Both of these watches worked. So not quite as much information, not as quite as much data that we get. Uh, we're at 24% battery. Okay. And then here we go. Let's stop. Hold our down. And get a map. And the location is not even on the ticket watch. If you go for a walk and you have the location on, it'll give you a map during the walk. So we have 6,300 steps, so very similar to what the Galaxy Watch was giving us. You can see where I was trying to get the last three mile on this watch. This one gave me the first mile before the other two. And then these two were in sync with the second mile. And then this one gave me the third mile before these two did, then this one, and then this one. So they're not uh, in sync with themselves. <laughs> So a little bit more information here, but not quite as much as the tick watch, but we do get a map, 33%. So we're done. All right, this has been my week. <laughs> I've been testing the tick watch, the galaxy watch, and the OnePlus watch too for a week now, and quartz. <laughs> so but let's talk about the charger. So this is the charger that comes in the box for the tick watch, Pro 5. It attaches on the side, it's just magnetics, and this just snaps into the side. And with the tick watch, it just magnetizes to the side, and when it's plugged in, it charges. So let me show you that. So when you plug in the tick watch, Let's you know it's charging and tells you how fast it's charging. You kind of get that metric through the percentage as it increases. Let's see if the screen goes off. Yeah, so the screen actually goes off with this one and it goes to energy essential screen. Um, so it charges pretty quickly. I'd say this one charges the fastest out of the three of them. So that's really nice. With this one in the dark, it's honestly really hard to tell which side of the charger you're supposed to attach to the watch. So I've, I've been trying to get it to attach, not on this side, obviously. Um, and so in the dark, it's been hard, but uh, it does magnetize to the bag. I can plug this into my phone to charge it, and it doesn't charge any faster or any slower than it charges with an actual, just a regular brick with the Type-C. It, it's definitely the slowest of the three for charging, which is annoying because it also dies the fastest. And it lets you know it's charging and tells you how long until it'll be fully charged. So one hour, five minutes. Earlier, I charged it from 17% to 32% using the back of my phone. So I have a Samsung phone and I'm able to charge it wirelessly through my phone, using my phone as a charger. And it, it said it would take about two hours and 50 minutes, maybe two hours and 30 minutes when I originally plugged it in. And then by the end, when it got to 32%, it said it would take two hours and 12 minutes to finish charging fully. So now we're at 24%, it's been an hour and five minutes, plug it into a brick into the wall. So it doesn't charge quite as fast on the back of the phone, but honestly, I thought it was pretty good considering that I would have expected it to be worse being plugged into the phone, wireless charging through the phone versus the charger that I came with. So but it says it'll take an hour. Honestly, I think it'll take longer than that. I've been noticing that it takes a really long time to charge. So I'll have to test out that and see if it actually takes an hour or if it's going to be more. And lastly, uh, we kind of are preferential to this charger. If you have an Android phone, most likely it has a Type-C charger and you can just bring this with you and use your phone charger to charge your watch as you're going somewhere. So you don't have to remember to bring a whole separate charger. I think this will be very easy to lose. It is so small, you know, it plugs in to the wall. When it's not connected to uh, the actual cord that plugs into the wall, I just feel like I would lose it so easily. But it is nice that it magnetizes to the back. Let me show you. So it, it does stay on. It's a pretty strong magnet, so that's nice. That's the one thing about this one versus the Galaxy Watch charger is that this magnet is not very strong. Accidentally just like lay it down the wrong way, it just disconnects from the charger. So it's really annoying. But this one stays very firmly attached, so that's really nice. And then we just plug it into the wall. It actually did come with a charger cord, an actual cord that goes with it. So that is nice. So as a whole piece, I mean, you could use the one that comes with your phone, you could use this one. Plug it in and immediately tells us that it's charging. It's very excited to be charging, very bright. But this one, I believe the screen will turn off. Yeah, so this one the screen turns off. I noticed that the Galaxy doesn't turn off, which is kind of annoying because I feel like it's using more battery to keep the screen on and it could just charge faster if it would turn off. I tried like putting my hand over it to turn it off, um, but it wouldn't turn off for me while it was charging, which was annoying. So this one doesn't tell you any metrics about how long it's gonna take to get to a full charge. All of them you can still use while they're charging, which is good. Notice that this one charges mm, slightly slower than the Tick Watch, but faster than the Galaxy Watch. So this, pattern screen keeps coming up uh, while I while the watch is not on my wrist. And so in order to use the digital wallet that is built into all of the watches, where you can pay by tapping your watch against the terminal at any store that has that out capability, you have to have the pattern or a pin that you type in some kind of password to watch at all times. So which was a little annoying. So with the Fitbit, I only had to type in my pin when I was going to check out. So I would open the wallet in my Fitbit and just put in the password then. And I'd have to type it in every time I wanted to use the watch. At first I thought that was gonna be really annoying, but it turns out if the watch is on your wrist and you don't take it off, then you don't have to keep putting in the pin. It will already, it'll automatically have a map in the workout. So when you're going for a walk, 
and you set go at the bottom of the screen it'll have your map on the entire time which i thought was really very neat so if i was out for a hike and i wasn't sure which way i came from or if i'd been down a trail i thought that would be really neat to see that i had where i had come from so when you start off it just kind of like okay you started here and you're here now but as you go for your walk the map shrinks a little bit um just to show you everything on your on your walk and your screen i do also love the dim screen that this stays on with the metrics of the workout and you don't have to go into the amoled screen in order to see some of the metrics that you might want while you're just out for a walk and of course also they change color with your heart rate so as your heart rate increases it'll go from yellow to orange to red to indicate that you've entered the higher heart beat range <laughs> so that is nice and of course you can see more as you spin the dial and one of the things I was actually concerned about is for a workout, I, I wanted to be able to see the AMOLED screen with all of the details for some of my workouts. Like when I'm at the gym, I want to know where I am with my calories burned. And I was worried that I wasn't going to have that information on the sort of uh, energy efficient screen. And honestly, that, that information is there. You can you can see some, some details of your workout. You can't see everything. But you can also turn off the tilt. Like So when you tilt your wrist, you can turn it so that it comes up with the AMOLED screen instead of the more energy efficient screen and have all of your metrics there. Or you can leave it on energy efficient mode and it will come up with this when you tilt your wrist and you can kind of, you'll see the backlight come on like this where it's blue when you tilt instead of it going into the AMOLED screen, which it is kind of nice. So it's just a matter of preference on whether you want to see the AMOLED screen when you tilt your wrist or if you want to see this one. And honestly, I might, I, now that I've tested it, I'm more inclined to stick with the uh, energy efficient screen because it does, it does have enough metrics. The information on the screen is probably the most comprehensive out of all three of them. It also has the best battery life, two screen options. It also has a like serious essential mode and you can change the battery drain so that you aren't draining the battery as much and it should hold two weeks or 12 days. Just based off of what I've seen so far, I don't know if I would believe that it would last the whole 12 days, but I, I could see that. So it, to switch it into essential mode, it comes up and tells you, you can't, you can't enter, you can't do anything more than see the screen. You can turn the dial and see calories you burn for the day and just the metrics for the day. It will still track workouts, I believe, but in order to turn it off, you just hold down the top button and then it restarts the watch. Just just to clarify, they're all great watches. They would all be fine and I think any of them would honestly work for me. And I think they would work for most people as well. They have a lot of the same overlapping features. They have a lot of the metrics and I mean, honestly, a watch is supposed to tell you time. They all do that. <laughs> so uh, they, have, they have the basics uh, for sure and they have a lot of the newer technology that you'd expect in a modern day smartwatch. They are, however, smartwatches. They're not fitness trackers. That's not their main goal. They just happen to do that as well. They happen to have some of those metrics and some of them more than others. There are some differences between each and some that might make your life easier or harder, depending on what you're looking for. If you are a Samsung user, you have a Samsung phone and you're not too worried about battery life or you're okay with charging it every day or every day and a half, maybe even two days if you're lucky, then I would go with the Samsung. Um, I've, I've heard this and I will explain kind of why I agree with this, but it really does have all of the little bonus features. So all the little extra things that you would want in your watch, the Galaxy Watch does that, but it also has a drain of the battery. So that's my only hesitation on this one. I would love to have this watch. I want to want this one. I want this one to be my watch. It's beautiful. It's comfortable. It's just got all of the little extra things with the app. You can't have the media player as one of your tiles on the other two watches, but you can have it as one of your tiles on the Galaxy Watch and you can control the music and connect to your headphones as well. So that's one of the things that's actually really nice. And I just feel like it has more tile options in general. You can have the assistant as your tile. You can have different clocks and timers, world clock, connectabilities, contacts, recorder. They're all able to have the recorder, so that's nice. And they have just different goal screens, which the other two have more limitations on. You can have maps. I think on, I think of the maps, you can have it on any of them. And then there's just some body metric composition uh, information calendar, but there's just definitely more options here. Device control, you can control your TV if you have it set up with smart things and multi-control as well. Different apps on here, it will, some of them also have tiles. I noticed this with the OnePlus that the daily activity, I didn't added it as a tile, but it hasn't been functioning. So it's supposed to look like this on the Galaxy Watch, but it doesn't do anything. It doesn't show me my daily activity, it doesn't open an app. I don't know if there's something wrong with the way it was added, but that's been kind of frustrating because I was hoping to see if we could set them up the same way. So I went in and I added, you've completed your like daily goals here and expected to be able to do the same on the OnePlus, but no. So that's the same. And then the next one I have the weather on both and you can see when you go into them, that is slightly different, but it's the same. And so they both have the hourly breakdown. This one's brighter, <laughs> this one's darker, probably better for the, um, the battery life. And then the, let's go back out of both. The next one, we've got our calendar reminders 
and then we have our workout options. Not in love with the way they've set up the organization for these workout ones you want to hide, like if I'm never going to use some of these. And then I'll just have a top workouts, which is separate from this. So you can have maybe your top three, click on more, and then set this up to be some of your other favorites that you don't use every day, but maybe you use them once a week, once a month. With the OnePlus, I'm not sure if you can organize these, but you can add custom workouts, I believe, on any of them. And you can um, go in here and they're organized, I think, in a way that makes more sense. So I went through all of them. You do have your like top three that you can set up to be here. So next, after that, this metric's really the same. Honestly, this is a little easier to read just right off the bat, but I do like the circles. Stop saying, come back. It goes away so quickly. Was not able to add the media player to this, and so... Then we have our calendar, which you can have the calendar in here as well. Uh, there it is. Yeah. And I have it set up for two different accounts. Um, and then after that, we're done over here, but we do have more tiles set up over here. This watch was able to have all of these tiles as well. So we were able to have Google Maps, which you can search for a new place, uh, create a note or a list, um, your emails, uh, recorder, and timers on, on any of them. So those are all the same. That is definitely a pro of a Galaxy Watch versus a con for the other two is the Find My Phone and Find My Watch feature. Instead of using your phone's ringtone when you do Find My Phone, this one has its own unique ringtone that is, is much louder and easier to find. So if I was looking for my phone with my current ringtone, I would probably not find it without with either of these if it was in like an obscure place. My phone, I intentionally keep it on a ringtone that is very muted, very quiet, and very soothing. So that if it accidentally, if I, you know, I had the volume on and accidentally goes off when I'm in a meeting or in a movie theater, then it wouldn't disrupt everyone. And I would be able to maybe address it before anyone else heard it. So that's not really very helpful for finding my phone if it's lost. And this one, I do like that it has a unique ringtone. I will say with the OnePlus, you are able to change the Find My Watch ringtone. So you're able to set a ringtone on the watch. And when you do Find My Watch, it's able you're able to have... A ringtone but i have a ringtone that's like louder but i can't imagine that for my lifestyle i would use find my watch very often i plan on having the watch attached to me at all times if it's charging maybe that'd be the time i would be looking for it but uh probably gonna be looking at the outlets if, in that case and all of them are find my watch compatible with android.com forward slash find so you can go there and hook them up and all of them were were already there on my phone i was able to click just find my watch find my device and it was they all ring so they all work they all function There's probably more integrations and more apps out there that will integrate with it. It connects really well with the Samsung phone. It has the best Find My Watch and Find My Phone feature. It has more options as apps go. It has the built-in Bixby and it has the Google Assistant options. So if you like one more than the other, the OnePlus comes with the Google Assistant integrated in and there's no assistant whatsoever for the Take Watch, which is a huge con for me and might be the reason that I don't select this one. I think I really want the assistant. It's been really helpful as I'm not very familiar with the watches currently and I keep forgetting which buttons are on which as I'm trying to learn them and what they do and I can just hold down and ask the assistant to open an app or to set a reminder, set a timer, and I don't have to worry about setting up all of the apps in an order that I will remember them because I can just ask the assistant and it's so much easier. And this one has the most consistent reminders to move. Uh, this one, I've noticed that it, it does do that occasionally, but not consistently. I think maybe if I'm moving my wrist, it thinks I've gotten some kind of activity in and it doesn't alert me for the next hour. But I would like to see that be better at notifications. Another thing to note for the OnePlus versus the Galaxy is the limit of tiles that you can have. Let's talk about auto tracking blocks. So with these two, I've used them the most because again, since this one doesn't have the assistant, I'm leaning towards not selecting it. Or, or they should all auto track your workout. For this one, I noticed that it starts tracking your workout, or in my case, a walk, if I've been working out or walking for 10 minutes. And with this one, it started tracking at about seven and a half minutes with the one plus. So it was a little sooner, which was nice because I'd reached 10 minutes and started tracking. This one was on 12 minutes. So they're not 100% in sync, um, but I feel like this one was aware of me walking a little sooner. The OnePlus also turns off and pauses your workout sooner. They were very similar, but it was about mm, seven seconds after I stopped walking that it recognized that I was not currently working out and it paused the workout, which in a way is nice. It's probably more accurate that way, but also like, come, come on, if I just pause for five seconds. Yeah, the cons are really that there's no assistant and that they're 
you're not able to customize these, this button, this also the spinny wheel, and this top button. I read online that there might be the possibility to change them if you download a third party app, but I don't want to have to download an app just to customize the buttons and what they do. So I don't care that it takes me to recent apps, and this one doesn't, it just takes you back to the home screen and your apps. So if you double, double press it, it brings open the wallet, and for this one, I tried downloading the app to see if I'm able to actually change the buttons because I'm again I might not keep this one. The OnePlus you can have a one click option, you can have a double click, and you can have a hold. And they so it's really like three different options there. And then this one down here brings you to your calculator. A one click, a double click, or to hold it down, you cannot change this one, it takes you to the power menu, which is fine. So I was able to put my calculator in but it is nice that I can have that as a quick option in case I need to calculate my tip at the restaurant with, with the Galaxy. The assistant comes up if you hold it down and if you double click whatever you set it to. This button down here takes you back to the screen at one click and so they all take you back to the screen. So if I click it, one click, it's really just a back to the main screen. Same with this one down here. And then if I double click it, nothing currently happens. I'm not sure if you can set that or not. And then holding it down takes you to the wallet. Now this one, the tick watch, one click takes you to your recent apps, double click opens the wallet, and holding it down turns it off. The, for the rotating button, it takes you to your apps. As far as battery life goes, the TicWatch and the OnePlus have very similar battery life. They both lasted me about three days. I have been heavily using them, I've been downloading apps, I've been checking them out and getting notifications, uh, so I think that they would actually last a little bit longer. I've noticed, especially with the OnePlus, and, I, and the TicWatch really as well, that if you don't turn the screen on, if you're not using the screen, or if you're not <clears throat> setting a bunch of workouts, they hardly drain any battery at all. Um, when I wake up in the morning, they're both very similar to when I went to sleep. They don't seem to drain too much when they're in kind of non-screen lit up modes. I think the screen is really what attacks all of their batteries. <laughs> also, tells you how long your battery should last before you'll need to charge it. So we got another day day and six hours left in a power save mode. This one obviously has kind of like two power saving modes, essential mode, and then just the regular um, battery level saving. And they all kind of tell you what you could do to reduce your battery, like clearly workouts. That really drains this one as well. The Galaxy Watch has a huge drain whenever I turn on workout. It also has this watch only mode, which should get you three days and 22 hours, which is probably where they're getting the whole three day lasting on, in their metrics. Um, but it definitely, I charged it yesterday. I had both of these at 100% um, yesterday morning when I woke up and we are at 23% after I charged it from 17 to 32% earlier before a walk. And this one's at 31. So again, I have been using them quite heavily uh, to test them out. I think they would last longer, both of them probably, if I wasn't doing workouts. This one, honestly, these two stayed pretty similar until I turned the workouts on and this one drained quite a lot. Um, and they both both kind of draining at the same rates otherwise. As far as comfort goes, they're all comfortable. I think honestly this one is the most comfortable because it has more round and fitting to your hand, whereas these two stick out and then wrap around your hand. So this one is very like flat. You can see a lot more of the band. This one is by far the most beautiful. It is the most beautiful looking watch. Everyone agrees, everyone I've talked to about them. This one is probably the most masculine. The tick watch it does look the most masculine because it is so sharp. Uh, and I, I think also probably the black something to do with that not look too much more masculine even if they were in black all right get ready we're about to do a 45 minute les mills workout it's body combat number 97 for anyone who wants to join along and we're going to test out the tick watch pro 5 and the oneplus watch too and so we've selected the freestyle workout on the tick watch and then to select a workout on the oneplus you go into your workout app and then we're going to do freestyle workout on both so we've just set the duration as our goal for 45 minutes it's currently at 110 yeah so you need to calm down we're not we're not up that high yet we haven't started uh, and you can see this one has a heart rate of 87. So uh, we'll just make sure that they're tight so we can get that metric as well. What's the, what's the stats that they kind of give us at the end and compare them. So get ready, let's go. Quick check-in, all right? It's the information we've got, pause it that way. And for this one, the color changes when we're actually working out. All right. No music playing. Changes to orange when your heart rate gets up. Quick update. We're in the red over here. Really dark red. We're only, oh, we made it to the purple. All right. Liking it. The OnePlus calorie wise versus the Tick Watch, what it says we're burning. Giving us more over here, so not sure how true that is. <laughs> Back into it. Right, about to get into the cooldown. This was purple. <laughs> just a second ago. Let me just twist the knob. Be through a minute, time, time that we've 
completed in the workout so far. Heart rate stays at the bottom. Calories is really the only thing we turn to see. You can see where we are. Pause it. And then we scroll up, down, down. All right, so. All right, no other information. Just checking. Pause it. All right, let's do the cool down. All right, that was great. So we're done. This one did vibrate to acknowledge that I'd reached 45 minutes. I don't think this one did. I didn't feel it if it did. Oh, by the way, let's try pausing. I can also press the multi button. Okay, uh, I press it down. Don't hold it, just press it. But this one, you have to hold the end. Freestyle workout. Then stop this one. Ah, I think that time it worked. End, please. Four sets. And 511 calories. Heart rate average. Heart rate 151. Pretty good. Seeing that cardio burn for a good bit. That's nice. Can we go back? See our workout on here? The 47 minutes. Um, yeah. We can adjust our goals. Just for our steps. What about any other goals? Calories. All right. Okay, so that's why our daily goal is 40. We're going to turn off the workouts and see what our battery's at. Okay, done. 97%. That's really good. Galaxy. So we can swipe over, hit finish. Workout over. Okay, thank you so much. Oh, so glad we could celebrate together. And lastly, we have the TIG watch. This turns off the workout and exercise for 48 minutes. We have 478 calories, some good range there. Let's get out of the workouts and we are at 94% battery. Interesting, on the yoga workout, the Galaxy gave me 49 calories and the OnePlus gave me 22. Uh, this heart rate was the same, basically 84 versus 82. The zones were very different. This one gave me a full three minutes and 20 seconds in like the warm up zone. And the other one gave me only 50 seconds. By now, I'm sure you're dying to know which watch is the one. Which watch replaced my Fitbit of six years, and more importantly, which is the right one for you? Even after testing the watches and taking them through their paces for several weeks, I still couldn't decide which one was my favorite. So instead, I decided to rate all of the specs and features according to my impressions on a scale of one to five. One being, this isn't going to work for me, and five being, great, they probably couldn't have done better. Some impressions are hard to quantify, but I feel this rating matches my overall opinion. I'm going to link the spreadsheet below so that you can make a copy of it and fill it out based on your preferences and opinions. You might have a different opinion um, than I do on whether Bluetooth is important or if some of these features aren't going to work for your needs, and then that might change your overall opinion in the end. There's two tabs, and then in this tab, there are three sections. There's this top section where I detail all the features and have some more details about what, what is included in that or if this watch has that feature. And then some more kind of details on this, the features that, that stuck out to me or I thought were important. And then I have some of the comments over here that I'll go through as well. And then there's two more sections at the bottom. There's this weighted grade section and this preference weighted grade. I really didn't know what else to call them, so we're going with this. I broke out each of these features above into five categories. Technology, battery life, useful features and apps, fitness metrics, and comfort. These were the top five categories of features that were important to me and which I think make up a good smartwatch. And in these categories is all of the items above. I took them based on a total for the number of features that were in each category. And then each of these five are all weighted equally. But in this bottom section, I put a little more thought and preference for myself on which features were more important to me than others to really reflect which watch was the right one for me. For example, I don't care if there's a SIM card in the watch or not because I wouldn't use it either way. So this isn't a feature that I weighted as heavily as say compatibility with some other technology. So that is a section also. You might want to consider changing some of these if you want to go through and make this for yourself. And just keep in mind, you only have to input the rating up here once and it will pull automatically and give you your grades down here. You don't need to make any changes unless you want to change some of these for yourself. But this section, you won't have to change at all. All right, so let's start at the top and go through some of the features that are a little more complex or might need some explanation. A lot of the tech features, they are what they are. A lot of watches have some of the same features. You can see Wear OS, of course, you want the newest version, and, and I think that's kind of important, so the rating matches that. Let's talk about screen type. I really couldn't tell the difference between the different screens, the AMOLED versions of them, but it was really neat to see the two screens for the Tick Watch. Having the low ultra power display versus the AMOLED was really neat. I liked all the features. It really, I mean, it could have had more, obviously. You can always have more features, but it was nice and simple. And for having the clock and for the power saving, it really was pretty awesome. It changes colors when you're working out to show you where your heart rate is. So you kind of know if it's registering how hard you're working. It also lights up blue or whatever color you want to change it to. 
the default is blue. As someone who's had a square Fitbit for years, I did think that the round screen was going to throw me off at first, but it really doesn't. I didn't even think about it being round. So if you're used to having a watch, you're used to having a watch. Battery life was something that was very important to me, and the size of the battery really does reflect the length that it will last us. For the Galaxy, if I was using it frequently, if I was taking calls, if I was doing text messaging, if I was using the apps and doing workouts, it barely got me through through two days. And it would even keep warning me that, hey, it's dying. I do like that the battery life does show up on my phone. And it might be because I have a Samsung phone that it, the battery percentage shows up in my Bluetooth settings and which watch I'm connected to. The other two did not do that. It was really neat because I could see when it was done charging and I can go grab it. Say I would recommend if you want to go with the Galaxy to just kind of charge it throughout the day and not let it get down below maybe 50% just because it'll be easier and take less time because it does take a while to charge. It's charging is super slow. The Tick Watch is the only one that charges fast. It has that quick charge and it can get you from like 20 to 50% pretty quickly. And that, that'll last you a good long time. That'll last you a couple of days. But then to once it gets to like 80, 90%, it does slow down and it doesn't charge quite as quickly. And it will show you once it gets to 90%, it gets rid of the last two decimal places of the percentage. And so you also kind of feel like it's going more slowly because it drops down. It's better to keep your devices between that 20 and 80%. Range. And so I, I mean, I would just say that also applies to the Galaxy Watch. Just charge it when you're at your desk or you're sitting down for a few minutes and then you'll be able to kind of not even notice that it'll die on you quickly. <laughs> and then I'd say the OnePlus charged mm, not quite as fast as the Tick Watch, but definitely not as slow as the Galaxy Watch. It was a good in the middle, reasonable charge length, and it, it still lasted a good while. You could get it to last four days if you're not using it too heavily. And then I would say on average, though, using it medium to high amount, about three days and battery life. So overall, pretty good. The Galaxy does need to get better. Hopefully the Galaxy 7 will give us that battery life that we're looking for. Even though the Galaxy 6 is technically a bigger screen, the OnePlus felt bigger. It was easier to read, and it might be because these two have that bezel around the top that makes it harder to see some of the screen features, and it makes it harder to type in the text message reply. It was, it was nice really not having the bezel. Although I used it when I was using the Galaxy Watch, I didn't miss it when I was using the OnePlus or the Tick Watch. And I never used the crown, the rotating crown for the Tick Watch. That was just not a feature that I gravitated towards. And I, I didn't miss it on the OnePlus when I was using that. My Fitbit had uh, the Sapphire screen and I have fallen on rocks. I have banged that thing on countertops and cabinets and all kinds of stuff over the years to the point where I was so certain that I had broken it and the sapphire glass is the way to go and that is a great choice for these watches because it's so durable. If you're used to wearing a watch, you probably won't notice the difference between these. The grams is so small and the watches really aren't that heavy um, that if you're used to wearing a watch, you, you probably won't notice the difference. My Fitbit was 42 grams. I still forget that I was wearing the watches, even sometimes with multiple on one arm, they didn't bother me in their weight. So if you're used to wearing a watch, you'd probably be fine with any of them, strap type. I would like to point out that the Apple Watch is the same size. It uses this 22 millimeter band. So this one probably has the most aftermarket band options because there are so many users of the Apple Watch. Uh, so you probably see a lot of those online. You cannot get the smartwatch band replacement on OnePlus's website. And being just while we're on the topic, you can't get a replaceable charger either, at least not yet. OnePlus mentioned at the end of April that they're going to try to start selling, end of April, 2024, they're gonna to try to start selling charger replacements online, but that might be some time coming yet. So if you lose your charger, you're out of luck. You're not going to be able to charge it. There are some options on Amazon that I haven't had the opportunity to try yet. I'm not sure if they work, but when I reached out to OnePlus, that's what they recommended was finding a third party to provide a replacement charger. So we'll see if that's something that I end up getting and using, but in the meantime, just going to have to try not to lose the tiny charger. We did end up buying a second band for the TIG watch, a leather band, and it was a little hard to break in at first, but it did fit. So if you're looking for replacement bands, just make sure you get the right size versus making sure that it says TIG watch or OnePlus or Galaxy in the name. If you get the right size, it should fit your watch. The watches all say that you probably shouldn't take them in the shower, anything with super high heat. I did end up showering with, um, with all of them just to test them out. If you aren't going to hold them under the water the whole time, they're probably going to be okay. I showered with my Fitbit every single day for six years and it was fine. So I wouldn't be too concerned. The cool thing about the Galaxy watch is that it has a waterproofing mode and it will also expel the water from your watch once you're done with the swim. So I really do think for the shower, if that's something that you're concerned about, it's just that you probably don't wanna expose it to the heat for too long, but the water part is fine. For the auto workout feature, I did notice that the Galaxy Watch would start the auto walk at about 10 minutes, but sometimes it would honestly start a little bit sooner and it got a little more accurate the longer I wore it as well. And the OnePlus would usually start the walk around seven and a half to eight minutes. Usually by eight minutes into the walk, it was going. And then I would notice that sometimes they would start at the same time, but this one, would, the Galaxy would say 10 minutes into the walk and the OnePlus would say about seven and a half minutes into the walk. The, the OnePlus was a little more accurate, but then there were times where the OnePlus didn't turn on the auto walk until much later in the walk. And the Galaxy was pretty consistent with about 10 to 12 minutes into the walk saying a 10 minute walk had started. 
there was one time when the OnePlus said I was 11 minutes into my walk and the Classic said, okay, we're starting. You've been walking for 10 minutes. So I suppose it's just a matter of how the watch has reacted to how it is me starting my walk. There are seven auto workouts that you can turn on. So it doesn't turn on an auto workout for every kind of workout, which is fair. There are quite a lot and probably it doesn't know the difference between tennis and racquetball, but on the Fitbit, you, any of the workouts, it would auto work out, but sometimes it wasn't, it didn't always select the right workout, but it would always start a workout and know that you were working out. And it would start if you were working out and doing activity for 15 minutes. So it is nice that the OnePlus starts a little sooner than that. There still could be more features there. For the TickWatch, it's similar where you have to turn on the, I believe five, it might be seven as well, but I believe it was only five auto workouts that you could turn on. It didn't always register those. So it was a little less consistent with the auto workouts than the other two. I don't hold much stake into the whole sleep tracking thing for any of the watches for the Fitbit as well. So I would take this data with a grain of salt. The Galaxy does give you a sleep animal to compare your sleeping to. And I would have considered myself someone who has a little less consistency with sleep. The OnePlus was always telling me that uh, my sleep was insufficient like, pretty much every night. And I usually try to get around six hours of sleep. So that's fair. But the Galaxy gave me the lion as my animal, which is, I think, supposed to be the best one and say that you get the best sleep or you have consistent sleep or something to that effect. So Again, this isn't something that I hold with high esteem for any of the watches. Voice Assistant is another feature that ranks very, it's very important and probably the reason that the Tick Watch isn't going to make it. I found this extremely useful and as I mentioned before, it's just something that is nice to have. As far as the usage goes, I would say I prefer the OnePlus's response and answers versus the, the Classic sent me to the internet too often and you can hardly see the little bit of the internet that it gives you and you basically have to open it on your phone. So that wasn't great, but having two options, you know, Bixby versus Google, I'm sure is a great preference for a lot of people. I did use the bezels, um, the rotating bezel on the Classic when I had it, but I didn't miss it when I wasn't using it. And I only used the rotating crown when I was going through the ultra power saving screen. Otherwise I didn't use that for navigation. The Classic has the best compatibility with the Samsung phone. If you have a Samsung phone, you're probably going to want the Classic. There's a lot of compatibility features that just make it really great. But there are also some other, like there's a OnePlus phone for the OnePlus, and I'm sure there are some additional features there. And on their website, they do claim that there are some. I do like the idea that the Tick Watch has a walking pad and a treadmill that you can also get this um, under the same family brand movie, um, but I haven't been able to try it yet. It's something I'm definitely considering if I keep this watch that I want to get the walking pad and kind of see if I'm able to use the corresponding apps that go, go with it. Let's talk about music control and media control, which I kind of have on here twice, and I'm probably going to delete one of them so that it's a little less confusing. But you can control the music that is playing from your phone, whether it be YouTube, your phone's music app, and music that you put on your phone, probably iTunes as well. I didn't try that. Specifically, Spotify works, of course. You can even download Spotify onto the watch as an app. And then Audible was another one that you can also download the Audible app and listen to your books, and you can even download the books onto your watch and use, you can play them straight from your watch so you don't have to bring your phone with you. The media player, media control for the Galaxy allows you to actually select the specific song that you're wanting to listen to, whereas the other two have the same media player app and it allows you to play pause, control the volume, you can go backwards and forwards, but there is no specific select the song feature. The music control, the media control for the Tick Watch and the Galaxy, while you're in a workout, you can swipe to see the screen on the right and it will have your media player there. Whereas in the OnePlus, you have to go out of the workout and go open the media player app if it doesn't already already automatically recognize that you are playing music and you have to go find the media player app and open it. So it's a little annoying, but again, the navigation's pretty easy with this watch and it wasn't too difficult to go <laughs> and just open it. One thing that I did notice for the texting app is for the OnePlus and the TickWatch, you do have to use G Messages as the app if you want to be able to reply from your phone. And at first I thought that was really annoying, but I ended up really liking this app and I'm going to stick with it. Uh, it, it allows you to do integrations with the emojis that iPhone sends you. So if you have someone in your life who uses the iPhone and they want to send you those reaction emojis, which is super annoying if you're not using an app that accepts them, then you can switch to this app and appear on the message screen with the, the hearts and the thumbs up. And it does a little dance on the screen so that you can have them linked there. And then it doesn't like send you another message with uh, so-and-so liked this message. And so if that's something that bothers you, you might consider switching to this app and using it. And you can also lock uh, messages and spam messages and stuff. So this app is pretty good. I would recommend it. With the Galaxy, you can use the Samsung Messenger, which comes on the Samsung phones. I didn't use either of these apps prior to this, but I haven't been missing my other app. And I'm going to stick with this one for, for texting. As far as starting a workout, unless you have a workout set on your watch face, which you can do in the complications and select like a specific type of workout or to just open the workouts, you have to go in and into one of the tiles or into the apps and open the workouts. 
for the top three workouts that I had set on my Galaxy Classic, which I could change, that was the easiest way for the like the top three that I use to select from there. But any further workouts that weren't those top three that I had to go and navigate to, the OnePlus and the Tick Watch were a little easier to navigate and to find like secondary workouts. With the OnePlus, as soon as you use a workout, it like goes into your like recent workouts um, category. So you have your top three and then you click on more. And within there, that is a, a list of your most recent workout types. You can change the list um, for the tick watch and how many there are that show up. So that is kind of nice. And it is only three workouts that it auto detects. So once you have auto detect turned on for these, there's just walk, run and cycle. Classic and the OnePlus, there were seven workouts and you don't get to pick what they are. They're just seven workouts that you can turn on to automatically log it once you've been doing them for seven to 15 minutes. <laughs> the tick watch beats the others by leagues for the amount of metrics that you get after a workout on your watch. And then as I show up in the app, I really just feel like this one was the easiest to read. It had all the metrics I could have wanted and it was really nice. You can customize what metrics show up while you're doing the workout. There's some modifications that you can make there on your screen. I say the galaxy had the most modifications you can make, but the tick watch was probably second and you could make some some adjustments to what shows up on the screen, but they are for each workout. So each workout you have to go in and decide what metrics you want to display on the screen, but that's fine. It's probably something you just set up once and you're good to go after that. It is really nice to have a flashlight on my watch and when I'm in the dark or I don't have my phone, and I'm looking for something, it is nice to be able to turn this on really quickly. Galaxy had different brightness levels, but it was just one color. The OnePlus had different brightness levels and three different colors, like red and blue, that you could filter between. And the TickWatch didn't have brightness levels, but it had two colors that you could filter. And as far as the weighted grade goes, this is just something that you might want to just check out for yourself and kind of see how you feel. I've just put some of, you know, the ratings in the categories that I thought this kind of fell into. But some of these might not matter to you, and you could just make a copy of this file, like I said, and delete any of the ones that you don't want to include in your ranking, and then just make sure to adjust the totals that you're taking this. There's a formula. <laughs> Take it out of the number of features that you put in here. And it pulls in from above, so you should be good to go with um, only filling this out once, and it should be pretty easy and seamless. All right, so let's reveal the ratings and the end result. What was the score? So for the first section, we added them all up. And we got an 80.82% for the Galaxy. We got an 81.84% for the OnePlus. And then for the Tick Watch, we got a 77.55. And again, I didn't know that this quite reflected what my thoughts were of the watches. I was surprised that the Tick Watch was quite as far down as it was because it has some great features. The dual screen was really neat and the battery life is spectacular. And as I mentioned, that was something that was really important to me but they were all very close. My uncertainty and not knowing which watch was really the one for me is justified by these metrics here. <laughs> it was still really hard to determine uh, which one I wanted and which one would be the best watch. And it shows because they very had very similar grades. And I will say this, if you were getting this grade for a class, you might be disappointed. They are not perfect. None of these watches had everything that I would want in a watch. They all had some feature that was very disappointing. And they all had uh, something just about them that I was like, well, really, this could be better. That was something that was also reflected in their grade. For the weighted grade, this first section, where it's just kind of a standard weighted grade across the board, they had very different scores. We went down 10% uh, for the Galaxy. And then the OnePlus, not, not too much different. It's a little bit closer. And then we got pretty much the same score for the tick watch. But then looking at some of the features that were a little more important to me than others, it, I mean, really, honestly, it's not much different. So you can go over to the summary tab. And again, this all pulls through and you can kind of see what the scores are overall. So the OnePlus didn't get any reds. It wasn't the lowest in any of the ratings. The Galaxy had two reds. They were the lowest in two of the, of the grades. And then the tick watch was the lowest in the first one. But then once we weighted some of the more important features, it really bumped up and was the highest for, for two of the others. So in the end, what, what I ended up doing was writing a sort of narrative for how I felt the pros and cons were really for each watch and how excited I was or how I really thought through how easy it was to write pros and cons for each one. And I really feel like there are the fewest cons for the OnePlus 2. And I think this is the watch that I'm going to stick with. And then during this whole experiment, my husband ended up deciding that he wanted to keep the TickWatch Pro. So we're going to keep the TickWatch Pro. He's a, this is his first time having any kind of smartwatch or fitness watch. It's really growing on him. And he keeps pointing out different features to me, which I've shared some of with you. But this is a watch that he really enjoyed and really thought of, thought highly of it and, you know, doing research on the internet. And he's decided that this is the watch for him. So he's made the leap and joined the smartwatch family. 
the OnePlus has blown me out of the water with way more than I thought it was going to be. It's just pretty. It, it's got good vibes. I'm really enjoying wearing it and I feel comfortable and confident in it. So I think this is really going to be the one for me. I do think they need to fix some things that the company needs to work on, but this is a brand new watch. It, it really, it came out in uh, 2024, so it's only a couple months old and they're going to have to add some bands on the website. They're going to have to expand some of the accessories like the port the extra charger. But once they get that down, I think that this watch has a lot of potential. So I'm excited to see what happens with the Galaxy 7 when that comes out in hopefully August of this year. But we'll see what kind of features and if they can actually improve the battery life, because that would make all the difference with this watch. But yeah, like I said, I'll, I'll link this spreadsheet in the description below and you can fill it out for yourself. Yep, so I hope this was helpful for you. And there's, of course, more features and more information that we could go more into. One of the things I wanted to test and I might still test is how easy it is to add music to the watch because they have... Uh, they have some storage and you can put music and apps and stuff on the watches and that's something that was always very difficult to figure out with a Fitbit and I'm wondering how difficult that is with these watches as well but there's always more features and more aspects we can test for the watches but these are some of the you know the features that I thought would make or break the watch and wanted to share because I wasn't able to find the information online I don't think you can go wrong with any of the watches they all are very similar and have a lot of similar features fill out the spreadsheet for yourself and see what score you get but I hope this was helpful for you, and I hope that you find the, the answer you need with whatever watch is the right one for you. Until next time, take care of yourself and get those steps in.